Hello and welcome to Sunshine Sunday with uh, Roger Hutchins Ministry. We're just delighted that you've joined us. Um, we're just a tad late, but we're getting things better and more organized and we're grateful to the Lord God Almighty for helping us with the things that we've needed uh, to function the broadcast properly. And Anyhow, we're just thankful that this is the day the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. And I was thinking about that scripture this morning on the way to church, that God has made us a day, not a night, a day. And He's made us a day to rejoice in. There's a couple things about that scripture. One is that our will is involved in whether we're going to rejoice or not, and whether we're going to enjoy the day. Now, we do have night seasons, we've had night seasons, but the reason we have a night season is because we need some light on the situation. But what God has given us is a day to rejoice in. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, Roger's going to come in just a minute and share the Word of God with us. We thank you for joining us. Uh, whether you're watching the live broadcast or through the YouTube or whichever means. Um, we want the Lord just to speak to your heart today. So we're going to open our ear, our spiritual ear, to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church today. <clears throat> and um, let's open our hearts. You know, uh, this is a strange time that we're in right now and have been for several months. But um, there's not any surprises as far as God is concerned. He knows exactly what's going on. The earth is still His. Amen. And um, the, over and over in the scripture, He tells us that He watches over us. His eye is upon us. And His eyes roam to and fro through the earth. And that's not to find fault or find a problem or see who's doing bad things. <laughs> that's because He's a protector. He's a father. In fact, he is the perfect father. So when he's looking over the earth and all of those things, he knows where you're at. He knows where I'm at. And um, if you're going through a night season, get into the Word of God. That's where the light of Amen. God comes. That's where our soul and spirit get renewed. Our minds begin to think differently and it pulls us out of the night season into the day that the Lord has made. And there, then we can begin to rejoice in it. In fact, most of the time it's better if you start rejoicing and then the night goes away a lot quicker. All right, well, let's pray and then Roger's going to come and break the bread of life for us. And um, just remember that it's the bread of life. This is the bread that really gives life to a person. And we know we need the physical bread for our bodies to function properly, but so does our soul and spirit need bread. So we're going to open ourselves up, Father, to you. Yes, Jesus. We thank you that you have given us yes, a day to rejoice Lord, in. Jesus. We thank you that your light is so beautiful and it overpowers the darkness. The darkness has to flee when your light comes. We thank you for that. Now Lord, we God. are here and many are gathered around their phones or TVs or whatever instrument they have to watch this broadcast from or the video and father we're here because we love you or we're here because we're hungry or we're here because we're searching for truth or something yes. whoever you have drawn together father we're here we're just here to hear you to know you to see you we love your holy son jesus christ we know that he paid the price for us to come out of darkness into your marvelous light, into the kingdom of God, where there is true life and blessings forevermore. We bless you now, Almighty God, and we just ask that the anointing arise up in Roger, that anointed Christ come forth in words of life, words that will destroy yokes, and words that will... <clears throat> 
uh, caused people to rise up higher and be connected to the head, Jesus Christ. And we bless you for it. Anyone who does not know you, Father, and your Holy Son, Jesus, we just ask that you draw them today. Stir in their understanding, Father, so that they can know what Jesus Christ has done and how precious and beautiful you are to us. We thank you for it now, and we offer our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, amen. We're looking forward to the to the um, Word of God today, and uh, you saw my sound man sitting here, my, my technical. Uh, that, that would be me. But... Um, we're going to share some things with you today. You know, like Cheryl has already expressed, uh, God doesn't change. The Scripture tells us that uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, he changes not. So, uh, and Holy Spirit's been dealing with me uh, that it's time that we begin to move on into a real emphasis on the Word of God and on what God is... Uh, let me make sure I'm getting all my stuff together here. Glasses are behind you. Oh, left them, left them behind me. <laughs> Sometimes I'll leave them on my head and forget them. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we're going to be reading, uh, if you want to go ahead and turn to Romans, we're going to begin in the last part of the Romans, the 7th chapter, and we're going to go into the 8th chapter. Uh, and I'm going to be having Cheryl to read some out of the Amplified. I'm going to begin in the King James Version, uh, reading some. Uh, let me make a couple of announcements because I want to, when I get in the Word, I want to, I, I want to go, be able to go uh, without uh, having to stop. But um, next Friday, that's, that's July 24th, we're going to be in Lexington, North Carolina uh, on Highway 8 South uh, at Speedy Lord's Barbecue, the annex building right beside of Speedy Lord's Barbecue. Uh, now that's the one, there's, there's two or three Speedy's Barbecue in in uh, Lexington, but it's Speedy Lore's Barbecue on Highway 8 South, uh, exit 95 off of uh, Interstate 85, and you go south about two and a half, three miles down there, uh, and it's on the right. We'll start at 7 o'clock. Uh, we will be following all the guidelines for safety and all the uh, the, the social distancing uh, as far as our seating and, and everything. Uh, you're welcome to wear a mask. Uh, uh, don't they know exactly all the rules, but we are going to have people that are helping us. Uh, Brother Dale Grimm has been so faithful and good to help us in those meetings there, and we really appreciate that. He's um, he's been the the catalyst that's cat helped us to keep it going. But uh, if you're within the driving distance on Friday night at seven o'clock uh, in Lexington, North Carolina, we're going to be back live and in person right there. We are going to attempt, uh, if, if our signals and all go well, uh, my phone works okay to, to also do a live stream from there. Uh, so those of you that are still a little comprehensive, I, I, I pray that your faith rises and you come on, come on out. We're, ca we're calling it the overcomers gathering and I believe we're overcomers. Uh, so, uh, come if you can. If you can't catch us on live stream, uh, we're going to be coming on uh, this week uh, doing some little encouragement things. Um, in the words, some things I, I felt like I should start uh, in the evenings. Don't know exactly what time, but you can uh, watch and see them. Uh, three to five minute uh, little spots. We'll also be back on at 12:30 on Wednesday. Wednesday in the Word. Uh, also, let me mention this to you. Uh, I usually stick it in at the last and it's just kind of a second thought. Uh, but we are in, still in full-time ministry and we do need you to stand with us uh, financially, stand with us in your prayers, uh, and stand with us that we can continue to bring the Word of God and continue to, um, to function uh, in this full-time ministry. We, well, I was looking at some of the pictures. I've got pictures of some of the orphans in Thailand where... Uh, we help support. Also, we go there to help uh, with the school. We're not going to be going this September because of the uh, virus and the pandemic, uh, but we are looking forward to going again next year as God uh, directs and as, as opens the door. There's also doors in Kenya and Uganda and, and other places in uh, El Salvador, in uh, uh, South, South America, Central America. Peru has been calling us. 
uh, and we are, uh, D- uh, Dimitri, we are planning on coming. So those of you in the Amazon that are watching this broadcast, get ready. We are planning as soon as everything opens up uh, to put some things together and uh, get in touch with Dimitri and, um, and uh, come back to the Amazon area in Peru and preach the Word of God, teach the Word of God, and believe God that God's going to do uh, some mighty and special things. But I said all that to, to say this, so into this ministry, uh, I have no, I have no uh, second thoughts on asking you to do that because we are partners in the kingdom of God, and because of your uh, faithful giving, we can do more than ever before. So two ways you can give right now that uh, that's um, easy. First of all, you can go on the Facebook page, on my Facebook page, and find the uh, link that says Tytherly. And if you click on that, it'll open up. It'll say uh, uh, Capstone Ministries doing business as uh, Roger Hutchins Ministries, and you can uh, it'll guide you through giving on there. Also, you can mail your contribution to P.O. Box 1007, Cedartown, Georgia, 30125. Uh, that's P.O. Box 1007, Cedartown, Georgia, 30125. And I thank you in advance for standing with us. Now, let's go into the Word of God. And, uh, you know, sorry we don't have any worship music for the giving and all that. You just have to... Uh, in fact, I, I think giving is worship, so why don't you worship in that? So, uh, in Romans, the seventh chapter, I want to talk about uh, uh, the the... the uh, law of liberty. In fact, I want the actual title of what uh, I want to talk about is three laws. You know, basically, uh, as Christians and as study those of us that study um, theology, most of, the, of us think about uh, the the uh, law of Moses, and we think about the new covenant, uh, and we don't understand that there are different. Uh, Laws and there's some progression in the scripture. Uh, and when I say law, not all the laws are uh, negative. Not all the laws uh, are. Uh, in fact, Jesus, even when he talked about the law uh, of Moses, uh, never said he was going to destroy the law. He said he was going to fulfill it. So whenever we begin to understand that Jesus came to fulfill that law, and when he did that, then that opened the door. Uh, if you will, for us to step in as believers in the Word. In fact, let's, uh, I'll get ahead of myself. But in the seventh chapter of uh, the book of, uh, of uh, Romans, Paul begins to talk about, uh, and the King James is a little, a little difficult to understand uh, as you read through unless you just really dig in and study. So I'm going to have Cheryl in a few moments to read, uh, read it in the Amplified. Uh, beginning about verse 14 says, uh, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that that which I do I allow not. For that what I would do I do not. But what I hate that I do. In other words, there's a, there's a warfare going on on the inside of Paul. And he said, uh, w- what I want to do, I find myself at, at war against. And, and I'm going to let the Amplified kind of uh, show you a little bit better picture of this in a moment. But verse 16 says, uh, if then I do that which, was, uh, which I would not, I can consent under the law that is that it is good. Now then... It is no more I that doeth, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Somebody say, in my flesh. See, there is a, there is a struggle between flesh and spirit. Uh, and, and let me move on so I can show you these three laws. Uh, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is the present with me, but now, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. In other words, he's struggling. Uh, he said, uh, what I want to do, I find it hard to do. Uh, and then what I don't want to do, that's what I find it easy to do. Why? Because uh, we live in, in many times through our physical senses. But... 
uh, I want you to know something today. Stay with me because I'm going to show you that there is a deliverance from this kind of uh, predicament. Uh, verse 20 says, Now if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Now that, that's the first law I want to point out to you. It's the law of God. The law of God after the inward man. Now I'm going to tell you something. If you study this out, and I'm not going to have time to go into a, a thorough theological uh, uh, explanation of all this today, but, but the law of God existed before the law of Moses. Uh, how how was that? I didn't know there was a law before that. Well, the law of uh, the law of God is what is uh, in I believe in every human uh, being, uh, going all the way back uh, to whenever Adam fell and they began. They had Cain and Abel. Uh, murder was still sin uh, before the law ever came. That was the law of God, and something in. Uh, Something on the inside uh, of Abel knew uh, what to do, knew how to worship God, knew what to do. That was the law of God working in his members. Um, just a little seed there uh, for you. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members uh, warring against the law of my mind. Now, now watch what's happening. The law of my mind. But your mind, uh, your, your mind, your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and emotions. So there is a, a warfare that goes on between our, our, uh, in, in our soul, between our mind, our will, and our emotions. So now, uh, how, well, I'm about to get ahead of myself again because let me go on so I can get Cheryl to read and we'll go on. And I want to go on into uh, the 8th chapter because in the 8th chapter, now man divided the chapters. Uh, Paul is writing this as one exhortation here. Uh, but he says, but I see in verse 23, but I see another a uh, law in my members, warning against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity of the law which is in my members. And he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Now there's a, there's, there's a cry. I think Paul is writing this on purpose so we understand uh, the warfare that's going on, the fight that's going on uh, in this natural man and in this physical uh, body. But he wants us to understand uh, that there is hope that, that God's already made provision to deal with that and already made provision to bring us into the arena, and I want to say it again, of the overcomer. All right. Uh, verse 25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, um, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now, I, I do want to tell you, uh, as Cheryl, Cheryl comes and gets ready to read in the Amplified uh, for us, uh, that uh, that's why the law of uh, the law of Moses, the law of that that the, uh, what was before Jesus Christ came could never take away sin. Why? Uh, because it was based upon things that were uh, destined to fail. It was based upon what we could do in this flesh. But can I tell you, in me and in you dwells no good things. That's in our flesh. But thank God there's somebody that dwells on the inside. Now there's the, the preacher showing up. Cheryl, come and read out of the Amplified and just share with, the, uh, with them uh, a little bit how the Amplified states that part of chapter 7. All right. Well, Roger started at 14, so that's where I'm going to start. And it says, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am a creature of the flesh, carnal, unspiritual, having been sold into slavery under the control of sin. And I'm going to have to put these on a minute because the light's not <laughs> what I need. For I do not understand my own actions. I'm baffled, bewildered. I do not practice or accomplish what I wish, but I do the very thing that I loathe or hate, which my moral instinct condemns. 
Now, if I do habitually what is contrary to my desire, that means that I acknowledge and agree that the law is good, morally excellent, mm -hmm. and that I take sides with it. However, it is no longer I who am doing the deed, but the sin principle which is at home in me and has possession of me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I can't perform it. I have the intention and urge to do what is right, but no power to carry it out. For I fail to practice the good deeds I desire to do, but the evil deeds that I do not desire to do are what I am ever doing. Yeah. Now, if I do what I don't desire to do, it's no longer I doing it. Now listen to this. Listen carefully to this. If... I do what I do not desire to do. It is no longer I doing it. It is the sin principle which dwells within me, fixed and operating in my soul. So I find it to be a law, a rule of action of my being, that when I want to do what is right and good, Evil is ever present with me, and I am subject to its insistent demands. For I endorse and delight in the law of God and my inmost self with my new nature, but I discern in my bodily members, in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, a different law, a different rule of action, at war against the law of my mind, my reason, and making me a prisoner to the law of sin that dwells in my bodily organs and the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh. Oh, unhappy and pitiable and wretched man that I am, who will release and deliver me from the shackles of this body of death? Oh, thank God, He will. Amen. Through Jesus Glory. Christ, the Anointed One, our Lord, so then, indeed, I, of myself, with the mind and heart, serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Amen. Doesn't she read good? Give her a hand. Amen. You have to clap loud for us to hear you. Amen. Uh, thanks to all of you that are that are signing on. Let, let us know you're there. If you're on, or even if you watch the video later, make a comment so we'll know you're watching. Tell us where you're from. We've already got somebody on from Kenya and from other places. And um, we're just looking forward to uh, ministering more. Let's go into the 8th chapter. Because... Kind of the seventh chapter leaves us in a dilemma. We see the dilemma that, that Paul is wrestling with. We see the dilemma that, uh, that he's going through there between the law of sin and death, uh, the law of God, and, uh, you know, and the law of God simply lets us know what's right and wrong. There, there is, uh, I think, uh, the Amplified calls a moral law or moral understanding. But in the, uh, in the eighth chapter, uh, there begins to be a solution. Uh, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation. Now as opposed to uh, under the previous administration, the previous, uh, the, the previous uh, old order that was there. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are where? In Christ Jesus. How did you get in Christ Jesus? First of all, you were born again, uh, being born again. Now we are part of the body of Christ. On Wednesdays, we're teaching on the kingdom of God. We begin to function uh, in in the kingdom of God, not just... Uh, we're not. We are the church. Thank God, we are the bride of Christ. We are the church, uh, but we are, we function in the kingdom of God. We're citizens of another kingdom. Uh, join us Wednesdays at twelve thirty, and we'll talk more about uh, the the kingdom of God. Um, he says. Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Watch verse two, because we're going to we're getting ready to bring in the third law. In in seven, we found the law of God, and we found the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death was the law of Moses. The law of sin and death, uh, you know, there there, there was uh, it brought in. Uh, 
You know, I, I, have, I violate about every day uh, the law of Moses. Can I tell you that? Because under the law of Moses, you couldn't eat pork, you couldn't eat catfish. Uh, so, uh, you know, sometimes during the week, usually we violate those, uh, those things. You, and it goes into all the uh, ordinances and all those things. Uh, but see, you, it, it's entirely possible to have violated uh, that that mosaic law yet not violated the law of God. The law of God uh, being those things uh, uh, that that God has set in our uh, hearts as uh, what we call a, a moral law. Uh, but he says, There is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit, this is the law number three, the law of the Spirit of life where is this law of the Spirit of life? It's in Christ Jesus. Remember what Nicodemus asked, uh, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, You've got to be born again. See, there is a law uh, of the Spirit of life that is where? In Christ Jesus. Hath made me free from the law of sin and death, for what the law could not do in that it was weak, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna come back to that in a minute because I want to take that and go over into uh, into James um, into the book of James uh, one twenty five. Go ahead and make a note of that because we're going to go there in just a minute. But he says, what the law could not do in, the, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. God sending His own Son. In the likeness of sinful flesh. Now, let me. Can I tell you? Uh, God began something in the garden. Now, hold on to this, because it may be it may be new to some of you. Uh, but but God began something in the garden that wasn't finished until Jesus Christ came. He came in the likeness of that sinful flesh, in the likeness of the first Adam, that He could manifest the last Adam. See, and, uh, you know, somebody said, well, we all in the garden, uh, God created us in the image of God. Yes, God created man in the image of God. It was purposed. It was, uh, God knows the end from the beginning. But can I tell you, the manifestation of that image was not seen until Jesus Christ came in the earth uh, in a fleshly body. Now hear me, uh, because the the, the work of of creating man in the image of God wasn't finished until it was manifest uh, in in that fleshly body of Jesus Christ. Uh, And, uh, you you know, I know that's going to be, that's going to cause some to raise your eyebrows, but that's that's all right. Just go ahead and dig in, because Jesus came, um, you have to go to uh, St. John, the first chapter, uh, we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father. He was the first Son. And I know some people says, "Well, uh, Adam, uh, Adam, Son of God." Well, he uh, he was created, but he wasn't begotten. Uh, see, so that that's a, a rabbit trail. I just want to throw a little uh, seed in there that we'll come back at another time. Uh, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned. He cl- condemned what? Somebody said, well, Jesus came and and condemned us. No, He didn't. I came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved is what He said. But He said, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. What's condemned? Uh, In Christ Jesus, where there is no condemnation. He just said that. But for sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. Now, uh, how did He do it? He overcame it. Verse 4 says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled where? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled where? Yes, I ask it again. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. His goal was not just for Jesus to fulfill the righteousness of the law, but it was for the the righteousness of the law to be fulfilled in us. In you and me, his body, this many membered body called the church, all right, in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Now, how do you change that? We were going back to uh, back to uh, chapter seven and Paul's dilemma uh, on on 
his wrestling, his, his, uh, that warfare in the flesh, how do you change that? Well, uh, you, allow, you allow the Spirit of God to begin to do the work in you because he ended um, chapter 7 uh, by saying, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And he understood then uh, that Jesus Christ came, paid the price, and can I tell you, death is already overcome. How do we, how do we uh, appropriate that to us? Uh, we, we simply believe it. We walk it out in faith. We go, by, uh, we go by faith and not by sight. And I know somebody said, well, that's like a broke record. And people say it over and over. No, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, whenever we, uh, we, we, we sense or, or experience sin uh, in, our, in our mortal body, then we understand that if we uh, confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and we walk as a forgiven uh, creation uh, through the earth. We understand now that we are free from the law uh, of sin and death, which was manifest and held grip on us through that Mosaic law. All right, now... For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. See, there, there's, uh, there's the key. What are you minding? What are you yielding to? Uh, it's so easy. I know I'm a man uh, just like you. I understand. It's so easy to yield uh, to the flesh. But see, now here, uh, there's a working of the Spirit going on in me and going on in you. I see it. I see, yes, it's in you. Those of you that are wrestling right now, is this really the Spirit of God uh, living and dwelling and moving in me? Yes. Uh, and you're growing, you're, you're, you're coming to a fuller stature, uh, the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Now, the, uh, he said minded, which takes us back to the soulish realm. The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. Uh, there is the place, the, 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 the battleground of the warfare. The battle of Armageddon in Revelation is not somewhere in the Middle East somewhere. It's right between our ears uh, because uh, whenever we go into that battle, we must go uh, fully armored, fully equipped uh, with the shield of faith, with uh, uh, the breastplate of righteousness uh, and all the things that are listed there. Uh, but to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. Ooh, glory to God. But to be spiritually minded, somebody say that, spiritually minded. God, let me be spiritually minded. God, how do I do that? First of all, uh, we give ourselves to the Word of God. We give ourselves uh, to to the Holy Spirit to teach us and to lead us and guide us. We hear the Word of God. We hear. Uh, we accept what God does through our brothers, our sisters, uh, and and uh, you know, I don't believe we can hear every voice because never not everybody's walking by the. Uh, walking by the Spirit, but there are those that are walking by the Spirit that God puts in our life uh, to, uh, to edify and build up uh, on our holy faith. Uh, but to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, we need to judge ourselves there. Uh, when I say judge, I don't mean in a bad way. I mean we need to say, okay, am I, uh, am I feeding myself my, spiritually uh, am I feeding myself uh, those things are, that are leading to life and peace? The scripture proverb says, uh, I said before you death and life, uh, choose life. See, so we have to make right choices. We have to choose those things that we allow to affect our mind, our will, and emotions. Our soul cannot be, uh, cannot be constantly fed on things other than the Word of God and other than what's in the Spirit. Verse 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, uh, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And notice he said, not subject to the law of God. Now, uh, the law of God uh, uh, is 
uh, still in effect, which, which brings us into the moral law, the moral things, uh, murder, adultery, all those things that were, uh, basically the, what was written in stone um, came under that law of God. Uh, it said, so then they that are after the flesh cannot please God. Now you're not, if you're in that warfare that Paul was talking about in chapter 7, uh, most likely it's because uh, you're yielding. And I, I've been there, folk. I've been there where uh, it was easier to yield to the flesh than it was to, 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 to uh, believe God. But I want to tell you something. Hallelujah. It is entire, entirely possible through Jesus Christ that we walk above this and we walk in a place as victors Somebody say victors, for God has given us the victory. Now hold on to your scripture there, and I will come back. Uh, uh, Cheryl, hold my scripture and remind me where I'll stop right there. Uh, but I'm going to go to, to uh, James, um, the first chapter. Now remember he said, uh, the law of the Spirit of uh, life in Christ Jesus. Now, I... He speaks of an, uh, uh, in a different term, but I think he's talking about the same law here in uh, uh, James 1 and verse 25. Uh, in fact, I may back up. Yeah, let's back up. Well, let me read the scripture and I'll back up to 19. But whosoever looketh into this perfect law of liberty, liberty and, and, and freedom, has set me, is, uh, Romans 8 said, has set me free from the law of sin and death. See, the law of liberty Whosoever look in this perfect law of liberty and continue up therein, uh, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man will be blessed in all his deed. Now let's back up to 19 and look at what he's saying here. Uh, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Somebody say swift to hear. Now, let me tell you, your hearing of the Word of God, your hearing uh, uh, in the Spirit of the Word of God is key to your walk with God in the earth. So, uh, let every man be swift to hear, uh, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For, for, we, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart filthiness and superfluity and naughtiness and be and be and receive the with meekness the engrafted now watch this the engrafted word of God the word which is able to say sir to save your soul now remember we talked about the mind uh, how that the natural mind is impossible but see the engrafted word of God uh, you know, this this morning, and I went to service this morning, and uh, and as I, the uh, ministry was coming forth, and I, I was thinking about a scripture. Uh, this wasn't part of the message I heard this morning, but I was thinking about a scripture. I think it's in First uh, Corinthians four and seventeen uh, that it says, uh, "You have not, uh, though you have ten thousand instructors, yet not many fathers." Uh, and and God, Holy Spirit gave it to me like this. Uh, you know, instructions, uh, an instructor wants you to know what they know. They want to give you their knowledge. Uh, but, but a father, now I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to go out and find some spiritual father. I'm talking about the function, uh, how, how some people function. Uh, and, and I remember whenever my, my children, I have three children, and, and uh, whenever they were growing up and whenever they would go to school and you know they would they would go and uh, their teachers and their professors their uh, you know men much smarter than I am that knew uh, knew about history and, and uh, geography and math and and uh, all those things that uh, that they learn in school they knew much more than I do but uh, but the children would come home sometime and and uh, they, they would be confused over a certain subject or would be confused over what it meant and how to, uh, how to work out or remember the problem. And, you know, I wasn't as smart as those instructors as far as the knowledge of what they had, but I was a father. Now, what does that mean? That means I, said, I would say, first of all, open your book and let me take a look. Now, sometimes I'd open the book and take a look, and the first thing it looked to me like, uh, 
uh, looked like it was Greek or something to me. It looked like it was some foreign language. But I would get in there and I would apply myself with them. I'll tell you, I learned more teaching them than I learned in school myself. Uh, but see, uh, a father uh, doesn't just put the knowledge out there, uh, the, the information out there. A father uh, will <laughs> will help you to understand. See, you got if you're a father, you're not just sitting back taking tithes from somebody. Uh, but, but you are imparting your Yourself. Uh, the the instructor uh, wants to give you their knowledge, but the father wants to impart who he is. And see, that's that's where we are. Uh, the father, uh, in in order to impart who he is, sent his son into the world. Uh, and, and whenever Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, came into the world, he became the first begotten of many brethren. Hallelujah! That means that you and I came in that uh, in that uh, order of many sons unto glory. Hallelujah! Uh, so now. Uh, Verse 22 says, uh, but, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself uh, and goeth away and straightway forgetting. See, that's that's what creation has done today, uh, is, is they have forgotten who they are. The church, listen church, in this pandemic and all the stuff that's going on and all the uh, upheavals and the anger that's going on, don't forget who you are. Hallelujah. Forget of what manner of man he is, but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, but uh, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. I just sense that. Somebody's hearing what I'm saying today. Get ready for your blessing because God said because you have walked uh, as a doer of the word and not just a hearer only uh, that God's about to open up the blessings of God upon you and upon me. Uh, hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you all the distractions that's been going on in the, in the earth have just been to try to keep the blessings from getting to us. But can I tell you I see them abounding toward you and abounding toward me and right now uh, set yourself in that place to understand uh, that God has brought us into that perfect law of liberty, into that law of uh, come on, hallelujah uh, back, back to the 8th chapter of the book of Romans uh, uh, into the um, into the law of the spirit of life and that's in Christ Jesus Hallelujah. So now in the freedom of that law, uh, let us begin to walk uh, upright as sons and daughters of God, knowing who we are uh, in this earth. Now, Cheryl, remember what scripture I stopped at? In? <laughs> she didn't know either. She's listening. Uh, <laughs> I'll get too caught up. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I think it's somewhere between seven and nine. <laughs> okay, let's just pick up on... Uh, on um, I'm plug on verse 7 again. Forgive me if I've read it before. Uh, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, uh, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they which are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh. Let us say that with me. I'm not in the flesh. I'm not in the flesh. How can I say that with confidence? It says it right here in the Word of God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in uh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Hold it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Uh, you that confess to be full of the Spirit of God, baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God is dwelling in you, and therefore uh, the flesh has no more dominion. Sin has no more dominion over you. Hallelujah. Uh, now, uh, enemy, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, whoo, I don't know what that's doing to you, but that's hitting right uh, some amens in me because if Christ be in you, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Uh, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Christ being in you, you ought to lift your hands and shout right now because if Christ is in you, hallelujah, uh, but the Spirit is life because of, of righteousness. Uh, of righteousness, but the spirit of him that 
But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, and He does, He does, who's living in you today? Don't let that carnal mind control you. You have been, you overcome that carnal mind. How? Because in your faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus came and defeated that, and now uh, we can walk uh, in the Spirit of God. That right, if the Spirit of but if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh, for if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit, somebody say through the Spirit, Hallelujah. Through the Spirit now, we're working through the Spirit. We're not trying to do this through the flesh. That's what happened under the law of Moses. They tried to live it uh, through the flesh, but it was impossible. It was also impossible for the blood of bulls and goats uh, to, to take away sin. But can I tell you, Jesus came and took away our sins by the blood of the spotless Lamb. Hallelujah. Uh, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of your body. Uh, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I'm trying to go a little faster because I've been going longer than I... Uh, but it's Sunday, it's Sunday and I, I, I want to give you the Word of God. The Word of God stirred in me. But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, that's you now, uh, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, <laughs> but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby ye cry, Abba, Father. Uh, the Spirit itself beareth the witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, or the sons of God, if you will. And if children, if sons, then heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if so be that, the, that, that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Somebody say together. Uh, glory to God. This is a time whenever Jesus is beginning to gather together uh, those that, that believe in Him. Those that are sons. Those that, Come on. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And I want you to understand that. Uh, the word joint heir, I, I, I've studied that out. Uh, where heirs of God means everything God, uh, what God has, He gives us. But He said joint heirs with Christ. If you are a joint heir, you don't on just your share, uh, you, you, every joint heir owns the whole thing. Amen. So right now, everything God's got is mine. Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, and every line. Amen. We're getting ready to pray for you now. I want you to get ready uh, because God wants to touch somebody today. Uh, glory to God. I firmly believe that uh, God has imparted and given us and I know I've seen it happen I've seen God raise the dead I've seen him heal the sick I've seen him do all those things uh, and I believe it can do it right here today uh, glory to God I sent somebody that's fighting a battle uh, in your uh, uh, lower abdomen there's something uh, I, I think it's cancer there's a darkness there that uh, that, that you need a touch from God uh, you need God to, to move and to touch uh, you right now father in the name of Jesus it's a man uh, it, it's, a, it's a man uh, specifically. Now, now, it's not ruling out God touching any, uh, any lady or anybody else with... Uh, but, but specifically down in your groin area, there's a darkness, there's something, uh, and I, I think it's cancer. But right now, in the name of Jesus, we command cancer, bow your knee to the name of Jesus. I know this is, uh, I know I'm not right there, so I can lay hands on you. Uh, but let Holy Spirit lay hands on you right now and touch you and uh, be made every whit whole. Uh, I sense somebody else behind, behind your right ear. There's something, uh, uh, there's a pain, there's something... Uh, that is uh, that's bothering you that you can't sleep you can't uh, you sleep a little bit and you wake up and there's a uh, there's a there's a pain there's a growth there's something going on 
uh, right there. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever this is, God, we rebuke it. God, we rebuke uh, a tumor. We rebuke uh, uh, God in any kind of disorder there. God, in the name of Jesus, that you touch uh, this too as a man. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you do that. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, uh, there's a family that is right at the, on the edge. Uh, I, I see some children that are crying and weeping because uh, mommy and daddy's been uh, been at odds against each other. I, I want to speak peace into your home right now. Uh, by the power of the Spirit of God, I want to speak peace into your home. How is that peace going to come and last? Uh, it's going to come and last because you accept Jesus and accept the Word of God. Why don't you lift your hands up right now and say, God, forgive me and help me to walk in peace and in life uh, in the name of Jesus that I can walk at peace in my own home uh, and amongst my own uh, children in the name of Jesus. We speak that to be done. Uh, there's a financial breakthrough. Somebody right now uh, is about to get a financial breakthrough. You've been praying. In fact, you're almost to the place uh, where you don't know what you're going to do. It's, it's been, it's been uh, magnified by this uh, pandemic, by the COVID-19 virus and uh, with with uh, it's a businessman, somebody uh, that has been struggling and, and saying, I don't know whether to try the whole loan or, uh, but, but let me tell you, God's about to move for you uh, in, in a supernatural way and bring you into a place uh, where the, that the abundance of God is going to come to you and He's saying to you, uh, don't forget the house of God. Don't forget uh, to be faithful in, in standing in the house of God. Hallelujah. I feel that uh, today. Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, somebody, pastor, uh, hallelujah. Pastors, I want to speak to pastors right now. Begin to seek God about opening up your churches again uh, because it's time that we move into that place uh, that we begin to gather together uh, 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 in a place where the, the body of Christ face to face uh, can begin to uh, have that fellowship one with another again. Uh, come on. We, those that have played church in the past and just went uh, just for the uh, j just to be seen and heard. That day is over. Uh, we're coming in to worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, as we begin ready to close this broadcast, I ask you, uh, God, touch all those that are listening. Touch those, God, that need a touch from God. Uh, mm, mm. Somebody's wrestling in your, uh, in your spirit right now because uh, you're, needing, you're needing God to move... Uh, you're needing God to move because you're saying, God, I want to see something. I want to see you do something uh, to let me know that you are hearing my prayer. Uh, God says to you, uh, have faith in God. Have the faith of God because if you'll stand in faith, if you, you take hold of the Word of God, God is about to manifest to you the love of God that you thought you had lost. That you thought... Uh, you felt it as a child. I see you as, uh, as a child on up through about seven years old uh, up into being a teenager. Uh, and then something happened uh, that, you, you, uh, th that you thought, God, you don't care anymore. You've forgotten me. I've messed up. And, uh, but God says He's not forgotten. Uh, He's been there all the time. And just reach out to Him right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. If you're listening to me uh, today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to ask Him. Uh, I want you to ask Him. The Scripture says if you uh, believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, uh, you'll be born again. So right now, will you do that? Father, I believe on You. I confess You with my mouth. I tell somebody uh, that You accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to go for today. Don't forget Lexington, North Carolina. Uh, this coming Friday, uh, July 24th uh, at 7 o'clock. They're in Lexington, Speedy's Barbecue, uh, right there on the annex uh, on Highway 8 South. Uh, don't forget uh, and be there with us. If you can't be there, join us online. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you uh, later. God bless.